We have a very strange, very warm weekend. Actually, the next five or six days are supposed to be pretty mild for the beginning of November here in Maryland. So we're going to try to squeeze in a little bit of boat stuff. And this is a project I've been working on for the last few weeks, last month or so. This is a 1965-68 Sears 45 horsepower outboard shell. There was somebody on Facebook Marketplace that couldn't get it running, got fed up with it, and I paid 30 bucks for it. So we pulled the power head and put in a 2000 watt e-bike motor kit that I bought on Amazon. So actually the motor head, or the power head, is under there and there's somebody that has expressed interest to pick it up. So we're gonna give this a try. Let me take off the cowling and show what this looks like inside. One of the most challenging parts of these conversions, it's not finding the motors because you can find these old derelict motors in lots of different places. It's not too much taking them apart, although I had a problem with the lower unit and getting that out because I wanted to pull the impeller out because we don't need it for this. That did cause some problems, but again, that's something else that you can kind of work through. The most challenging part that I've found, and I've done a few of these, is the coupler arrangement. How you marry the motor, whatever motor you get, to the drive shaft. And whether you make your own splines, whether you buy Lovejoy connectors, and this is the second set of Lovejoy connectors that I've picked up. These are much beefier, they're bigger than the one I made or used on the previous build. So that coupler arrangement is the most challenging. The rest of the stuff you can kind of fudge your way through. So let's go over what we've got going on here. These kits are pretty cheap. Uh, I've seen them from $125 up to a couple hundred dollars, depending on where you get them from. And again, this is the 2000 watt version. The max RPM at the motor here, I think is about 5,600 revolutions per minute. By the time we get through our reduction ratio down at the bottom, which is standard for outboards, which is about two to one, we cut that in half. So we're somewhere 22, 2300 revolutions per minute or thereabouts. Controller came with it. This is a pretty beefy one. I've seen some kits that don't have controllers that are quite this large. This is a 48 volt fan <clears throat> that a good friend of mine sent me. So we've got that connected here. We just have that on its own switch right there try to keep things cool a little bit for the front of this particular motor this one didn't come with the plastic piece on the front so i found some mesh we put some mesh in there to give it a little bit more protection and for the back of this cowling that i see and see cut some vinyl decorative letters on the side is a shower drain that i found at ace so <laughs> Try to get a little air movement through there. The steering that we have is what I've been using for several different motors on this boat, and again, could not be simpler. Fortunately, when I bought this old 67 Glastron, which has actually become my testing mule for these things, it had the springs and the pulleys for an actual cable system. And just for testing, I just use some rope here. I do have some cable, which we will eventually switch over to, but for the time being, we are just using rope. And as far as these openings on the side, somebody else had cut some big, rough openings on there. So we just rounded those out and put some of these vent hole covers on. These just release, you pop that, this comes out. You can toss them both in the holes and then cap the, cap the back. At the moment, we are just set up for forward only. While we have our shifter here to engage the clutch to go forward to reverse, right now that is not connected. We're locked forward. There's a few things I need to get to as far as controlling, controlling that mechanism. So for the time being, in a protected lake, just running some tests on this, uh, we're going to stick with forward only. These e-bike kits are all pretty much the same. They come with a few different accessories, but for the most part, they're very similar. The 2000 watt 48 volt units come with this extra little three-way switch here. And I believe it's something like 
50%, 75%, 100% for how much juice you can get to your, your motor here. I've also found that as far as the programming and the controller goes, and you can't get into the programming for this particular kit, other kits that are far more expensive, you can set up lots of parameters, but for this one they're preset. Depending on the battery bank you've got, these will relate to how much amperage you can pull. That's my understanding. And the other thing is if we start on one, it ramps up much more slowly. If you start up on two, instead of a slow speed up, you kick it kind of fast. And three is just everything, which you'll really feel. And I'm curious to see what that feels like actually in the water. And again, for the steering, we just put a bolt through the front here. We've got these connected at this point. This is a temperature probe. In the other video clip, you could see there was a probe that was hose clamped to the actual motor, which is a meat thermometer, so it'll tell us when our pork roast is ready, which is good to know. Um, but it also, of course, shows the actual temperature. And with that fan, I've done some tests in the shop, and because so much air is blown, it actually really has dropped the temperature down after running for a couple minutes. So we might get around to testing that as well, and we'll see. Another view of our battery bank, just a plastic container I bought at the hardware store and a really ugly hole there that kind of split in the middle of cutting it for these wires to come out of. We have an e-stop switch, which is really important to have for this stuff. The fire extinguisher is on the other side. This has nothing to do with the electric motor. This is a little kit that I put together that runs the bilge pump and the lights bow light, stern lights, has some USB charging, and a cigarette lighter plug, and we've got a uh, kind of readout here to see what our status is, and as far as the battery in here, this is just a little 35 amp hour AGM battery in that box. Another view of this thing, <laughs> it's kind of menacing. <laughs> Just learning from each one. Each build that I've done, each motor that I've found, each one that I've taken apart, I've learned a lot. And the weird thing is, each build gives me ideas for the next build. And it's fun to find these things so cheap. This one, in addition, because it was 30 bucks, the prop is worth what I paid for it. The part here that this bolts to was split off, so that's been epoxied and uh, kind of held together. If this works really well, then we'll clean lots of things up. We'll clean some of our grinding marks, we'll throw some paint on this, and we'll make it look a whole lot more presentable. But for the time being, we're just gonna give this a try and see where we go. Boat's pretty filthy. I haven't washed it since we pulled it out last. But today, next couple days, just a little bit of testing. So we're going to drop this in and see what kind of results we get. I've done a dry run here, at least goosing the throttle a little bit, and everything seems to be engaged. This motor sits very low, but we should have enough clearance to drop this in, and then we'll motor away. Beautiful weather today for November 4th, about 65 degrees and no breeze. Great day for a little electric motor testing here. And my wife turned the boat around, which is great because we are forward only today. Still need to get that linkage connected. Okay, we have just left the dock. And I've got this on maybe 10-15% speed. So it's going to be hard to judge this with the throttle here. So this is about, I think, 75% speed, if I remember correctly, on the second level. Somewhere between 50 and 
nice little wake behind us. Just got back, boat back on the driveway after a quick little drop in, a quick little test of this electric motor design. And we can put this in the positive category. Everything worked per plan. Didn't quite know where the top end speed would be. I was thinking somewhere around the five mile per hour zone, but you never quite know. The nice thing about this base is it's pretty easy, of course, to access the head in there. So we could put a different electric motor in there if we wanted to. There's lots of options for, for that. So testing will continue. And this was a nice little gift for beginning of November to actually get out there and play with a little bit of boat and stuff. So thanks very much for taking a look.